choice. Today we are signing an agreement about joining uh, Donetsk and Luhansk People's Republic, Zaporozhye region and Kherson region. I'm uh, sure that our legislative body will approve accepting the four new subjects of the Russian Federation because it is a will of millions of people. And it is, of course, their right. This is their right, which is uh, on, in the first article of the UN statute, which says about the definition of peoples. It is founded on the historical unity of uh, generations of our peoples, those who during centuries was, was building and defending Russia. Suvorov, Rumiansk, and uh, Rumiansev and Ushakov were fighting uh, our grandfathers and great-grandfathers were fighting uh, during the Great Patriotic War. Uh, we will always remember those who did not put up in 2014, who died for their right f to speak their uh, language, for the right of preserve their culture to live, the fighters of Donbass and of uh, uh, Katyn, uh, those um, mercenaries, uh, civilians, uh, Ukrainians, Russians, peoples of different uh, nationalities, uh, Alexander Zakharchenko, leader of uh, Donetsk, uh, and uh, Olga Kachur, Alexei Mozgovoy, uh, prosecutor of Lugansk, Orenko, uh, the uh, Nurmogomedov and all our uh, military who died during the special military operation. They are heroes, heroes of great Russia, and I ask you to honor their memory with a minute of silence. Thank you. Behind the choice of millions of residents of uh, Donetsk and Luhansk People's Republics, uh, Zaporozhye and Kherson regions, is our history. Uh, this uh, spiritual ties was passed uh, through generations. Uh, people brought through years this feeling to Russia, and nobody can destroy this feeling. Uh, this is why older people and young people, those who were born after the uh, collapse of the Soviet Union, voted for our joint future in 1991 in Belovirsk, Pusha, uh, the representatives of the party elites took, made a decision uh, and uh, people ended up torn uh, apart. It became a national catastrophe, uh, same as uh, a time, some time ago after the revolution, the republics were cut artificially. And, and this time, after the referendum of 1991, our great motherland was destroyed and uh, peoples were put before the fact. People, I think, didn't even realize what they were doing and what consequences it will have. But it doesn't matter anymore. There is no Soviet Union anymore. You can't return the past. But 
Today's Russia doesn't need it anymore. We don't uh, strive for this. But there's nothing stronger than the desire of millions of people, those who uh, by their culture and language consider themselves part of Russia, uh, whose uh, grandparents lived in uh, Russia. They have the desire to return to their historic uh, motherlands. During the long eight years, people in uh, Donbass were, uh, there was genocide against them. And in uh, Zaporozhye and Kherson, uh, they tried to breed uh, hatred to Russia. The millions of people were uh, threatened uh, for uh, their desire to come and vote in the referendum. I want uh, the Kiev authorities and their real masters in the West to hear me and remember those, those people who live in these four regions are becoming our citizens forever. We are calling on the Kiev regime to immediately cease fire and all military actions. And the war, they started back in 2014 and returned to the negotiation table. We are prepared to this, but the choice of the people in the four provinces we are not going to discuss. Uh, Russia is not going to betray it. Today's uh, Kiev authorities have to treat this free uh, expression of will only like this, and this is the only way to peace. We will defend it by all means, and we will do everything to defend uh, the life of these people. We will rebuild the destroyed cities and villages, schools and hospitals. We will uh, develop infrastructure, uh, industry, uh, education, uh, health, uh, and we will uh, uh, make sure we will uh, all the republics and uh, areas of our huge motherland uh, live, uh, have prosperity. Dear friends, colleagues, I want to address the soldiers and officers who participate in the special military operation in Donbass and Novorossiya, uh, those who, after uh, the pa uh, partial mobilization, come to the military commissariat. I want to address their parents, wives, and children and tell them what our people are fighting against, who is our enemy, who is uh, throwing us into the crisis and uh, benefiting from it. Our brothers and sisters in Ukraine have uh, seen with their own eyes that uh, the leading circles of the West uh, have thrown of the masks and shown their nature. After the collapse of the Soviet Union, uh, they decided that we will all have to put up with the dictatorship. Uh, at that time, the West thought that uh, Russia is not going to survive this. And this nearly happened. We remember the horrible and hungry 1990s, but Russia has survived and became stronger and uh, has its uh, place in the world. 
But uh, the West is still trying to make us weak, uh, to uh, split us into parts. Uh, they can't put up with the fact that there is such a huge and a great country uh, with uh, natural resources uh, who, which is not prepared to live uh, under the Western command. Uh, the West cannot uh, leave the uh, colonial uh, mentality. Uh, to, they want to try and uh, receive rent uh, of hegemony. And the, the preservation of this rent is their key motive. This is the reason of their aggression to the independent countries, to traditional values and cultures. And uh, the, the, hence the attempts uh, to undermine the centers of uh, development. It's important for them that all the countries uh, surrender their sovereignty for for the uh, to the United States. Some countries uh, are voluntarily willing to become vassals, but if uh, countries do not uh, agree to this, they try to ruin these countries. Millions of uh, killed people and uh, f their lives, uh, protectorate colonies, they don't care uh, as long as they receive their profits, their greed and their uh, attempt to preserve their power is the reason of this hybrid war the West, collective West is uh, leading against Russia. They want to see us as a colony. They want not, instead of uh, uh, cooperation, they want uh, to rob us. Uh, our thoughts and philosophy is a direct, direct threat to them. Our culture is a threat to them. This is why they want to forbid it. Our de development and prosperity is a threat to them. They don't need Russia, but we do need it. I want to remind you that the, the attempts uh, to uh, become masters uh, of the world uh, was not successful, and we are going to defend our country. The West is hoping that uh, they will remain unpunished for everything. Uh, the agreements for strategic uh, security go to the bin, uh, the treatments and uh, the uh, promises not to extend NATO to the east, the agreement about uh, missiles and non-proliferation have been broken. We can hear from all sides the West is standing by the world order based on the rules. But who has seen those rules? It is some delirium, uh, complete lies and double or even triple standards. It is uh, for fools only. Russia is a, a country of great civilization and it will not live under these rules. The so-called West broke the principle of the uh, border, borders uh, non-breaking, uh, and now they are deciding who is uh, who, uh, who gave them this right. I don't know. This is why they are so angry about 
uh, Crimea and uh, other four regions. They don't have the West doesn't have the right to speak about this democracy. Uh, the Western elites he hegemony uh, has, uh, they are dividing their vas vassals for developed, uh, so-called, and uh, non-developed barbarians. Uh, authoritarian regime and other names uh, are given to uh, lots of countries, and uh, there's nothing new about it. The Western elites are colonialists, uh, same as before. They discriminate, uh, they divide other countries into uh, sorts. Uh, Russophobia. Uh, which is spread now uh, all over the world. Uh, uh, racism is the, uh, the thought that neoliberal culture is uh, example for the whole world. Who is not with us is against us. That sounds strange. They, uh, the uh, Western elites are putting, uh, forcing uh, other countries to uh, apologize for things they have nothing to do with it. For example, colonialism. Uh, let me remind you that the West uh, was dealing with uh, slavery, colonialism back in the Middle Ages. Well, in what some might describe as a political and historical rant, the Russian president addressing an audience of dignitaries, parliamentarians, government ministers, religious leaders gathered in St. George's Hall in the Kremlin ahead of signing decrees formally annexing nearly 20% of Ukraine into Russia. There are now four new regions of Russia, he said, talking about the, quote, votes in what were illegal referenda. Putin said the people have made their choice. It is the will of millions of people, he said, to uh, applause from those gathered in the hall. And he went on to describe uh, that vote and this decision as their right enshrined in the UN Charter. Let's discuss whether there is any veracity to that and what we understand to be going on today and why. CNN International Security Editor Nick Payton Walsh joining me from Kramatorsk in Ukraine and CNN correspondent Claire Sebastian who is in uh, live in London. What do you make of what you've heard so far Nick? Yeah, I mean, two things that really stand out for me. I think the top news line from this is possibly, as some expected, he's calling for a unilateral ceasefire, essentially saying that these four new areas that are part of Ukraine, that Russia now says are part of Russia, that are occupied partially, that they are not up for discussion. But here is possibly what the play behind all of this really was, that the Kremlin would, as they did again here, say that they will use all means available to them to defend these areas, declare them part of Russia, and then say, right, let's have a peaceful settlement, putting pressure perhaps on the Western backers of Ukraine to push Ukraine towards the negotiating table and perhaps to other players around here too. Turkey, for example, whose president's been on the phone to him recently about this very issue. It's clear that militarily they're still losing here starkly. The second thing, though, that Kate struck me there was this extraordinary split-screen uh, fictional history lesson, that essentially all of this is because NATO is expanding eastwards. All of this is because of the poor conduct of the West treating Russia and other countries like colonial subjects, all of which Russia has itself been accused of. And presenting a case, really, here for the continuation of uh, this war. I should say, I don't want to speak for the people in the audience, but the faces did not look like those who nodded their overwhelming endorsement. This is clearly an elite that is reeling still from what they've been seeing over the past month or so, but a very impassioned, very familiar case now that this is all basically not Russia's fault. It's been backed into this corner and it's defending itself. But these arguments do, of course, hold no currency globally. Whether they have made any uh, mark in the room, 
we'll find out in the weeks ahead. But a, a very clear message, frankly, if you want to take away one thing from this, it's Vladimir Putin saying, let's now have a ceasefire. Let's talk about a peace, potentially. Now, of course, we know that Russia uses diplomacy as a pause to pursue its military ends. It's failing militarily here. So already Washington and Kiev have said there's very little reason to see negotiation moving forwards here. But he was, I think, at this point, holding out the possibility that this is the next step. We're seeing on the battlefield, though, just in these hours now, Russia again losing a strategic potential position in the Luhansk area that they've just now claimed is part of Russia. And we're still, of course, yet to find a, an answer in reality. Here's the split-screen parallel world of what the Kremlin says is going on on the ground. We're definitely mm. seeing them losing. And the areas they've just said are part of Russia, well, Ukraine's controlling more and more of them by the hour, it seems.